Hello, brothers and sisters. Today is June the 7th, and I have a, a dream and a few flash dreams to share with you. The first one I want to share was, um, just tells me how close we are to actually going home. I was at this heavenly mall again. I'm sure if you guys are familiar and have been watching my dreams starting since, uh, you know, last year, whenever they started. Um, I've been to this heavenly mall a few times. It's a place up there in heaven that I, I, kind of has a feel of a mall. There's a lot of stuff to do there. And I was there taking my daughter, whose name is Trinity, and her middle name is Rain, R-E-I-G-N. So it's, it was spelt like that, and it was her mom's not even really a Christian. Oh, well, she says she is, you know. But um, so I, I had no idea why she called my daughter Trinity Rain, but it was so prophetic. It was pretty neat. Now we're up at this mall up in the heavenlies, and my daughter's wanting to watch a movie, and so. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, brothers and sisters, it's as if we're standing on a mountain. Maybe Mount Zion, I don't know. We're standing on a mountain, and we are all in a big, large group, kind of like a, if, if we would have just been raptured or something, you know. Um, we're standing together. We're all excited. I noticed that I want to take a picture of my daughter by this group of people, and she's wearing all white. And so as I'm looking at this group of people uh, that's standing there, all grouped together, and I believe that most of them are wearing all white, if not all, I looked through my camera to take a picture of her, but my camera's focused more to the right, and I noticed that I'm focusing in on angels. And how do I know they're angels? Because all I could really see were their white feathery wings, and they had like, their bodies were like sparkly, like glitter, you know? But their wings were like solid. I can see the wings solid, but these particular angels, um, the rest of the body were kind of glittery, like, kind of like a spirit, you know, and they're glittery. Probably trying just to, to hide their true form, I guess. But the thing, the strange thing about this was, is they were kind of little. They looked like my daughter's size, and my daughter's eight now. You know, they're really small uh, angels, and they were side by side, like if they were two warrior companion angels, right next to each other. So I'm still focusing in on these angels through my my camera. I'm going to take pictures, but I'm kind of just focusing focus, focusing in on them because I know they're angels. And they do a symbolic thing where they shoot up in the air like a couple times, letting me know they're angels, um, kind of hinting to me that we were raptured out of there because we were top of this mountain. And in the distance, you can look. And all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, uh, the lights go out. Boom. Not where we were at. Not the place I believe we were raptured out on Mount Zion. Mount Zion. We were actually looking down at the world, I believe. And all of a sudden, boom, all the lights go out. It's pitch black. All where uh, all on the earth was pitch black. Now, after I see the, all the lights go out and it's pitch black, I see to my left, I see boom, bomb go off. Now, there's there's been many times um, where I've seen that, brothers and sisters. Uh, I've seen many cities get destroyed by bombs. I've seen a, uh, the new um, One World Tower get destroyed. I've seen many cities uh, get nuked so many times it was crazy. Um, I've seen the three days of darkness, or I've seen the darkness in a lot of other dreams. I've just seen a lot of this, this stuff come to pass. And one time, um, the Lord showed me what would happen with, with me right before the rapture. He showed me as, as, as if I was looking down from the universe, and I was watching the world, and I saw a big old um, nuclear warhead going down to hit the ground. And as the nuclear warhead was going down to hit the, the ground, um, before it even hit, I was up there with Michael and, and Jesus and Gabriel and they were celebrating with wine and all this kind of stuff. Um, so it was a you know great experience and they were telling me they had me a new glorified body and and so right before that bomb hit, uh, we were up there. So that's what I saw. I was, we were up there celebrating, saw the angels, the lights went out on the earth, boom, you know, we was already up there celebrating. And then the strange thing is there are these really nice couple there a woman and a man the older couple for those of you who are not familiar with my channel and if you just sus subscribed welcome um you know i've never had a really had a father and a mother like love me and take care of me when i was growing up or you know i've always been alone type person you know never had that affection growing up and and they were, they were this older couple that kept standing by me and my daughter and they wanted me and her to go live with them now this whole time my daughter trinity is trying to run upstairs in the mall kind of like symbolic and I want to go up um, and they're talking to me and they're 
explaining to me that they want me and her to go live with them in this huge house in Mississippi. Now it was something, something Mississippi. I don't remember that part, but I looked up the word Mississippi and it means father of waters. So when I heard that, you know, after I researched it afterwards, like, wow, that's Heavenly Father, you know, in his river of life, um, you know, he's the creator, you know. And to me, I was just, just symbolic of wanting him, wanting us to go up and live with the Father of Waters. I said, that's Heavenly Father, everybody, and Jesus Christ. And they asked me if I wanted to live with him, but in my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, I live in Louisiana, and I have a little girl who lives in Louisiana, so I really can't go with you to Mississippi. So I was like, nah. You know, and they looked at me like shocked, like, why, you know, why wouldn't you want to go? But I was thinking in my head, like, you know, uh, the normal mindset of somebody living on the earth. But what they were saying, going with them into heaven. But as we left this place, we, uh, they, we get in their car. We're actually, I'm driving this car. I'm not familiar with the car. And we open the doors of this car and we're all getting in. So I'm going with them to, to the Father of Waters in Mississippi. I'm going there with them. You know, anyway, we're all getting in the car and we're leaving there. Now, the funny thing is, is my daughter in the back seat had a, uh, a child seat. Now, my daughter's not in a child seat anymore. And my child looked as if she was three or four years old. So this is something really strange I've heard before, that there's a possibility that, say, you're, you, say you have an eight-year-old little girl like I do. And say, you know, your ex or whatever took off with your child and, you know, you haven't had a chance to raise your child and or do none of those things. I don't, not, this is my opinion, but people have went back and said that when they saw their child in heaven, um, their child was actually younger spiritually. The spirit was younger, didn't mature as fast as the, the physical aging body. Um, so basically, if my daughter's eight, eight here, it was as if I'd get that chance to be a father to my daughter. She'd only be three or four in the spirit there, if that makes sense to you. And I, I pray that, that that comes true, because that's kind of, might be Heavenly Father's way of giving all of us more time with our loved ones and with our children that we never had a chance to be with. Who knows, God the Father will probably stop the aging in this other spirit altogether, just so you can have that gift of spending time with a loved one. So I thought that was very neat. Okay, now I have a few flash streams to share with you. Those who are not familiar with my flash streams are usually really quick visions. Um, like I see things and it's kind of it or I hear something and that's kind of it and most of the time I have more flash dreams than, than regular dreams um, but one someone told me that the, one time I had saw the Lord and he was talking to me he allowed me to remember when he was talking to me but not the conversation um, well a little bit of the conversation but he, uh, someone said the, when he, like an angel said to me when you saw the Lord he met you at the west gate so that's, that's one of the flash dreams I had Another one is actually might have something to do with this Mandela effect. I heard something about time travel, history. Um, then I heard Obama miracle that never took place. That's what it says. Something about history, Obama miracle that never took place. And that was a flash stream. So that tells me that they're going to say or do something. Obama's going to do something that he never did, but called a miracle because uh, it's like he's changing stuff without even doing it. Like he's going to use, uh, I don't know, guys. I don't know if it's CERN. I don't know. Whatever it is, um, he's going to use this Mandela thing. He's going to use these uh, these effects to work a miracle. The, the Lord told me that he never actually did. Okay, so so be, be mindful of that. That some of the things he's going to be doing and saying they're miracles aren't even really miracles. They're just... Um, just tricks uh, tricks of Satan you know also I, I actually heard one, one that was really exciting to me I heard you will love who you're paired with brothers and sisters um I don't know if it's everybody but I I think there'll be a lot of pairing going on and and I'm not meaning companionship compa uh, pairing that's something totally different I'm talking about warrior pairing if you are a guardian a warrior of God um, I believe that most would be paired with a partner, like, you know, say it's Michael and Gabriel or Raphael and Uriel or, or whatever, you know, like there's going to be a pairing of warriors that go out and they do things together in twos and threes, you know, it's not all by yourself all the time. And I was just told I was going to love who I was paired with, and that's pretty much it. Now, this is kind of strange, and one time I saw you, you, um, you are, I'm not even going to say this, I don't think, because it's too deep for a lot of you. Um, you know, I've been in a lot of missions for the Lord. Um, he's told me that and he basically I think told me who I was um, on previous missions but I, I don't think you, a lot of you are ready for that uh, also one time 
I saw in a vision that the Lord gave me this this thing. It looked like a uh, I don't know, like a check mark. Come to find out, I think that was a Lamed staff. It's Lamed, and he told me it's for me and to give it to the saints. And so, come to find out, it means a staff. So it's a staff of authority. So he was giving me authority, and he was telling me to give authority also to the saints. It also happens to be the twelfth letter in the alphabet. And the 12th letter has to, do, has to do a little bit with the 12 apostles. And I've been getting a lot of this Lamed stuff. Um, and that goes into also a what or who I was in a past mission that I can't really talk to you guys about. Now, to get on to... There was this one that I still haven't figured out. Let me see. Last what, Two days ago, the Lord came to me. And every now and then he'll come and he'll like either talk to me in his lovely voice, powerful, lovely voice, or he'll talk to me in my spirit. And it's so loud, you almost hear it, but it's kind of like it's just, you know, engraving upon your soul. Like you hear it like it's so loud. I heard, um, I shall forget Jacob no more. You know, and for those of you who don't know, one of the names that the Lord calls me, he calls me Jacob. Um, my first time I ever had a few dreams, uh, the Lord had me in dreams and she had, he had people calling me Jacob. And then one day I was praying and asking the Lord what tribe I was from, because I was always curious, you know, if I was from one of the tribes of, uh, you know, Israel. And he did. He came to me and he said, he said, Jacob, thou son of David. And that about freaked me out because I've had a lot of adoption in my family, or, you know, through the years. And I had no idea that I was even from the tribe of Judah, but I am. Uh, he told me I was from the tribe of David. I mean, um, the tribe of Judah from the house of David. And that, that about blew my mind. And that was a audible stern loving voice of Jesus Christ one of the few times I've ever heard him talk like that so that was pretty amazing now this is a really strange one guy I'll picture this you're in a cave and in this cave there are four stacks okay picture okay let me see picture a pipe tube little skinny pipe tube sticking up off the ground up in the air picture four pipe tubes that are silver colored one, you know, to the left, one to the right, one to the right, one to the right. So you got four silver. Okay. Now, each one of these pipes, well, three of them have jewels. If you can imagine a big jewel ring. Now, I put a big, big yellow ring on one, big jewel. And put another one, big blue jewel ring, another one. So basically, the very first, I know the first was the, okay. One time, guys, I heard um, the angel of authority, fourth in command. Okay, so I again was the fourth ring of stones on this thing. So I want you to try to visualize this. The very first stone represented somebody, but I, I was too busy looking at mine to see what it represented. But he had around uh, six stones. And it could have been Michael, I'm not sure. But he had about six stones, I believe, five or six stones. And then there was a, you know, yellow, blue, a, I mean, all kind of pretty colors, you know. The second one had a few less pretty stones. It might have had one or two less than the first one. Now the third, the third one, um, I don't know if this was a bad thing for the third person or what, but all it was was a pure silver rod with no, no precious stones on this rod. It was just a silver, silver rod, like a, you know, just a thing sticking up with nothing around it. Now, I don't know what that represents or who it represents, but I know for the fourth one, which represented me, I saw it had more, and I'm not saying it's a prideful way, brothers, I'm just explaining to you. It had the most uh, jewels, you know, whether they were purple or yellow or green, you know, all this kind of stuff. It had about seven uh, precious stones in the shape of rings up and down, filling this whole tube up, right? It filled up the whole silver tubing. I couldn't see the silver tubing. All I could see were these precious uh, stones looking like kind of like the big fat ring head, you know, of, of different colors. Except the really cool part about it was each ring going from up to down had an initial in it. So the very first one was R around like a big green, you know, gem. The second one would have been a, a A, you know, around a blue one or yellow one. Then it went to P. It was like every single gemstone had a, a letter um, kind of carved into it. And I was sitting there looking and I was noticing that these four, these four, things here that represented four angels on that very last one I, I read R A P H A E L all individually carved into seven let me count this one two three four five six to seven stones so if you can imagine that seven rings seven different colors 
each with a, a R or A in it or you know what I mean spelling the name Raphael then it says something about um, um, I, ha I heard a voice say something to me about I'm, I'm reading my paperwork here um, uh, that I now be known as it now like kind of like guys like I mean in heaven God the Father wants to bless you he wants to give you gifts he wants the things that you know like the Lord said you know if, if, a, if, a, if a child asks for a, a, a fish do you give him a stone if you ask for if you ask for whatever do you give him a snake you know that's kind of what he's saying like um god wants to give us the desires of our heart you know so if you are ever known if you were ever known by more than one name and you like one name over the other i believe god would he loves you and he wants you to be happy so he'll let you be called in heaven by the name you liked before um i personally think that was the meaning of that but this thing was in a cave and it was, I felt when I saw this, that I saw four angels here and I could saw the fruit that was being done by each angel. Now, I don't know who the other three were. The first one was doing good. The second one was doing not as good, but the fourth one, the fourth one, the fourth angel had more gems than the rest. Um, but the third one had no gems and it was just a silver uh, thing coming up. And these were all in a cave. So this, this is really symbolic and a lot of you are not gonna understand this, but um, if you've been, been around the channel for a while, you know the Lord gives us a lot of uh, symbolic dreams and visions. And, uh, you know, he's, he's revealing prophecy to us like never before. And some of these things you're not going to understand. But the Lord said, if you, if you can't understand the things that he would tell you of the earth, how are you going to understand heavenly things? Um, now, I also, this is a weird part. Um, I saw a man and he had deer antlers on his head. So I knew that was something bad. I thought that was the enemy and he had deer antlers. So I kind of scratched out on my paper. I wasn't gonna share that, but I thought that was kind of strange. One flash room I saw that guy with deer antlers. Now, I had a really, really cool experience. Got a experience. I was in heaven, looking up like from the top, like a fly in the wall, looking down into heaven, brothers and sisters, and I saw the most beautiful, beautiful place. And I'm in the air and the, the flooring was beautiful and like, it was strange, it was so majestic and beautiful. And I saw this spirit, he looked like uh, a muscular Jesus and I like looked like he had wings. You couldn't see the definition of wings, but you saw like the, old, like the white glory coming off like a wing. And he had long brown hair, but kind of muscular. Um, I thought it might have been uh, the Holy Spirit, maybe. And and the coolest thing about this place, brothers and sisters, um, I saw something like a baptismal font. It was a little pool of water. And I got excited and kind of like, I had the revelation of what this place was downloaded into my conscious or into my spirit. I was being shown Oh yeah, when I saw him, he was so beautiful. He was glittery, like gold glitter everywhere. You could tell he was there. You could see him, but he was see-through, but he still was glittery. He still had brown hair. He still had his wings. He was just cool. I pretty, he got to be the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. He was beautiful. And either that or maybe it was the Father. I, I don't know. You know, I say not Jesus because he didn't have a physical body. But but I find that the Father and the Holy Spirit and um, Jesus kind of look alike. So... It's downloaded into my mind what this was uh, and it, why I was being protected so highly. All of a sudden I realized that, I and mean, I'm told, this is the place where spirits go, like when they would jump into that water, I don't know if it was a portal or what, when they would jump into that, that beautiful uh, heavenly uh, pond looking thing or uh, baptismal font, they would be born to flesh on the earth. Just understand what I'm saying? So before you were pregnant, God ordains what baby, what spirit you're gonna have in your child. Now, as far as I, as far as I saw it, this I was misunderstanding, but this kind of, I don't think I am because it was being revealed into my spirit that this is where we would go as pre-earth spirits. We'd go, God would tell us what we're doing, what our mission is. We jump in these baptismal fonts, uh, washed over by God, and then your spirit would be transported into your mother's womb uh, into the egg when it's fertilized uh, Isn't that something and this place brothers and sisters was was so beautiful. It was so God was showing me this is this is me Because look how beautiful this place is you won't find nothing like this um, in the enemy's territory It was glorious glittery gold everywhere. 
he was beautiful and glow oh I just, it was just beautiful beautiful and um the next thing was kind of weird i actually went on a mission for the lord one time and and this is a little symbolic but at the same time i think it actually happened as well so here i am i'm going on a mission and i'm going to talk to this old angel who worked at a store now i i am one who have been told that angels work on the earth unaware for some reason their memory are taken away you know and they live lives just like we do and die just like we do so i was going to talk to this guy who supposedly was an angel that worked at a store and i was told it seemed he had worked there for so long that he had forgotten how long he was to stay at that store so i talked to him and told him i would say a prayer for him and ask god the father and uh and christ to know what message that he what message am I supposed to reveal to him, you know, like, so I prayed to ask God, Father, what would you have me tell this man? You know, he's forgotten, you know, kind of thing. And I think it's really symbolic too. And I got a message back from the Father and it said, keep him at the store. That's all he said, keep him at the store. So then after I kept him at the store and said, you need to stay here, I told him, um, and then basically I started to teach him um, of his purpose, uh, that he was a son of God. Now, son of God, that also could be referenced to angel. And he had a wonderful purpose and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Like I started to tell the guy that he was, he was worth something, that um, he was a son of God and that, you know, I was giving him, um, uh, I was giving him the words of the Lord, what the message was from the father. And that was pretty much it for that one. Um, the last one, I wasn't going to share this one, but uh, it's kind of interesting. I was, the Lord was picking people to fight next to him. He was fighting, he was getting four um, angelic fighters to fight on his fighter jet team it's kind of symbolic so bear with me so at first I started off the fourth because I'm always referred to in my dreams and visions as the fourth but you know the Lord kept giving me promotions we'd be like in a, a fighter pilot like um, how to put it like in a if you can imagine like a, a, a fighter pilot ship that makes up uh, five people say so the saviors in the middle and you got like four you know warrior angels on the outside and you had four posts the third post the third gunner the fourth one you know what i mean like four gunners with the lord driving the ship now we'd fight the enemy boom 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 shooting stuff at him and the, the lord uh if, would if this was the lord i mean I, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not sure about this particular one but i'm sure because i'm leaning towards it being him but I, I'm, I'm not sure so i won't say for sure but we would go boom 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 we'd be fighting and we'd be getting getting scored and some people would be doing terrible and he rotate us out and finally i kept getting moved up and up and up and up until i reached the um the the second uh the second spot i reached the second spot and the ones and i oh, i think there might have been five spots because the second spot was actually the first spot in this dream and then one of the girls in this dream was a girl and the rest were all guys so those all guys except for one girl was in this dream and everybody kind of was doing their thing, being tested, firing their guns, and we got into a rhythm and we all got our spots and kind of like you were getting promotions um, in your training. So I I'm not sure what to make about this dream right here. So I'll, I'll just share it with you just to share it. Um, but like I said, I don't, I don't put much stock in, in that particular fl flash dream. I just thought it was really, really interesting. And so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the it for the flash dreams um, in that one dream I shared with you. Um, but I do hear things from the Lord um, when things are, you know, he allows a lot of us to be tested and tried. Um, he is letting us go through the refiner's fire, brothers and sisters. What do you think that means? That means you're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. And when you're bringing people to the kingdom of God, you're going to be attacked more than you've ever been attacked before. Not only by the enemy from the from the powers and from the dominions and thrones and the wickedness in high places, but you're also attacked by Christians. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, fellow Christians who call themselves Christians, or they attack more than, than the Satanists and the witches do. You know, by their fruit ye shall know them. Right? By their fruit ye shall know them. So if you have the spirit of an accuser, then whose spirit do you have? Because God does not accuse. God has angels set up to stop the accusers from reaching the throne. That is supposed to be the job of Uriel to stop the accusers but the accusers are supposed to be the, the demonic entities so if you are finding yourself accusing everybody then you are actually doing the work of demonic accusers Satan's job 
don't go to anybody's channel accusing them brothers and sisters because because your job is to love God with all your heart might mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself and if you can't do those two things you are not worthy of Jesus Christ you are not worthy of heaven if you are not getting tested if you are just going through life and you have no trials and you don't not you're not getting any attacks and you say to those oh we, you're only getting attacked because you must have windows like kind of like windows open or doors open I never get attacks well you know I wouldn't brag about that because if you're not being tested Jesus is not putting you through the refiner's fire his bride is putting being put through the refiner's fire so if you are not being put in that refiner's fire then more than likely you are not his bride so please don't brag about that please repent over that and ask the Lord Lord just to make sure you know that you're in his will because believe me I have a lot of friends who are Christians and the ones who, who will never get attacked are the ones who are um, say they are Christians but they're really lukewarm you know or they have such contradicting beliefs that are, are leading people astray but but time is so close brothers and sisters time is so close the Lord told me uh, about a month and a half ago to get in my prayer closet he said angel get in your prayer closet and that's pretty much what I've been doing and ever since that I've been been refined like like never before brothers and sisters like I mean all day all night I have to go into spiritual battle and the Lord told me last night he was really well pleased with me even though he's allowing me to go through major attack he came and he appeared in my spirit and he told me like I felt his love for me and he told me I was still in his love of course and he said um he said that he would never forget Jacob again and he calls me Jacob I know that was a double meaning meaning Israel but he was also saying that he will never not look look upon me again like he will always have me written upon the palms of his hands he will always have me in his thoughts and because I have not denied him he will not deny me brothers and sisters please if there if you have your head sticking in an ostrich hole too afraid too afraid to stand up brothers and sisters then the Lord may not stand up for you at that critical point where he is standing before God to, to you know it's like saying if you are ashamed of Christ I, I will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ but if you don't take up for the gospel of Jesus Christ if you deny him if, if you are silent then he will be silent for you when it is your time to stand before the Father don't fear man don't don't fear the enemy brothers and sisters stand up now is your time we are days weeks I doubt months away from the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ stand firm stand up stand proud go home with honor don't fear man don't let people scare you and just because they make a an attack video out against you stand in what you know you have the words of God written upon your heart you stand upon what you know the spoken word of God will never change God's spoken word will never change the word of God is Jesus Christ the Savior of the world he is God's word he is the spoken word of God and he will never change his decrees will always be met his words go about and they never come back void brothers and sisters but words on a book can be changed words on a book can be changed and if you deny that if you deny that all you have to do go back and do simple simple study and see simple changes that have been being made so you contradict yourself my beloved brothers and sisters just like I said last time James the Apostle James his real name was Jacob that's a change King James changed it so that right there if you go to all the, the James, Apostle James in the Bible that's all supposed to be the Apostle Jacob that that's all changes being done right there so then you go back and you say well God will never let nobody change the scripture well but you admit to it later on that he's changed it many a times you're contradicting yourself please loved ones open your heart open your mind Pray that the Holy Spirit will seal you with truth and with knowledge and bring all things back to your remembrance. For there is coming a time in the land, brothers and sisters, a time is coming where there will be a famine in the land for hearing the words of God. The time is now for you to pray like you've never prayed before. Repent like you've never prayed before, like you've never repented before. Ask God to forgive you. Get on your knees, abase yourself, and say, God, I am sorry. Wash me clean in the blood of the Lamb. I surrender my life to you, Jesus Christ. I am your vessel. Do with me what you will, Lord. I love you. I praise you. I adore you. Blessing, praise, and glory be thine forever and ever. Say that to the Father. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you must do these things. 
You must stand firm in the face of fear when they have, when their adversaries come come at you to to make you fear to turn from truth. That's the same way. Whenever they come at you with the mark of the beast, will you fear or will you stand firm? All this is is practice for you having fear and taking the mark of the beast. This is all this is. But if you're if you're failing now, if you're giving in to fear now, think about what would happen if they had your children before you and they're gonna cut their throats unless you deny Christ and get the mark. If you fear over these little bitty Bible changes, then what are you gonna do when you stand before, you stand with your family and they, they kill your family unless you take the mark? You're already giving in to small things. You're gonna give in to the bigger thing. But if you say, no, I don't fear man, I only fear God, I don't care what nobody thinks, I, you know, then, you know, you are training your mind and training your spirit to, to, to be absolute with what you stand on and you have the words of God written upon your heart, brothers and sisters. Get baptized by full submersion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. Repent, 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 repent every single day. It's not enough to... Once saved, always saved, brothers and sisters, is the most demonic thing I've ever heard in my life. To to get saved, you must endure to the end. The Bible says, he who endures to the end is saved. Doesn't matter if you were saved 50 years ago, you were not saved 50 years ago because the end had not come yet. Okay, this is a trick. What you do is you repent always. You always abase yourself. You always ask God to make you meek, meek and submissive, lowly of heart, con contrite with a broken and cr uh, crushed heart and spirit. God loves you. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. We're at a critical time right now, brothers and sisters. You must submit. You cannot serve the world and you cannot serve Babylon. You must draw that line in the sand and make a jump towards the Savior side or to the world because you cannot serve both. If you serve both, you are lukewarm and God will spew you out of his mouth. You must choose Christ. You must choose Christ while the day is, while the day still lasts, brothers and sisters, because we might not even have another day. And what you do right now will depict whether you're here for the tribulation and the great tribulation and whether you're up there uh, with family and with Christ at the wedding supper of the Lamb in joyous communion with your God, becoming one with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, do not look with your natural eyes. Look with your spiritual eyes. Remember with your heart, all right? This Holy Spirit will bring all things back to the rem your remembrance if you stick close to the Holy Spirit. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if you have not fully submitted to him, now is the time, brothers and sisters, if you are listening to my voice out there, I ask you to get down on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Wash me clean in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. I surrender my life to you, Lord. I give it over freely and willingly. I give you control of this vessel to do with, uh, to do with it what you want. And I will submit myself to you because I love you. I praise you and I worship you. And I want you to come inside of me and to do with me what you want and to bring many souls to you. If, it be so, if I be so blessed that I bring one soul to you today, praise God. If, if I be even more so blessed, Father, use this vessel to bring millions of souls to you. Submit to him. Don't, don't submit halfway or half-heartedly. Say, I'm, I'm going to give my life to Jesus, but I'm going to still do this or that or that. No. Surrender your life to God, no matter what obstacles may come your way, no matter what pain may come your way, become a new creation in Jesus Christ. Let the, let the latter rain fall upon you, brothers and sisters, and stand firm in your beliefs, and stand firm with the Holy Spirit teaches you. Come to Christ, repent of your sins, get baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and let Him change you. The hour is late. It can happen any day now, brothers and sisters, and what you do now means the world. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When I became a man, I put away childish things. But before I became a man, I didn't always fit the shoes of a king. I was so lost and alone, listening to a world that said, do it on your own. Jesus was an afterthought. This world was my home, bumping Marshall Mathers in my car like, yeah, I'm grown. Forget putting God first. I was the Lord of my own throne. And searching for satisfaction is all that I'd known. Because before I became a man, I was just another middle-class clone. But when I became a man, I woke up. 
I stopped wasting my life, hoping and wishing that a better life would just show up. I started listening to my mom for so long, said, son, you need to grow up. So I grew up. And then the thought of an average life made me want to throw up. So I threw up. Yeah, I threw up my hands and said, God, I'm tired of being a boy. I'm ready to be a man. Because one day when my son takes my hand, I want him to know that it's not about what his dad said. It's about where his dad stands. I want him to know that I believe in a God who inspires us to have big dreams and bigger plans. I want him to know that, son, if God is for you, the naysayers of this world do not stand a chance because there's a difference between being a boy and being a man. When I became a man, I was ridiculed and laughed at. Whispers behind my back like, is he really like that? He must be uneducated. I was put down and degraded. Friendships lost. Relationships faded only because I chose to live the life for which I'd been created. It's funny how when you mention Jesus, you're suddenly hated. It's funny because that's the same people who came back around years later when they saw me in the paper doing things with my life and giving glory to my Savior. And then I get a text, an email, a call. My life is in ruins. Can we talk at all? Yeah, we can talk. Because I'm still here. But I'm just going to tell you about Jesus, even if it's not what you want to hear. But I'm guessing that you already knew that I would, because you used to make fun of me for it. Misunderstood. So tell me about your life, and I'll tell you about your need for Christ. And we can keep our conversation secret. Your texts about wanting to know more about Jesus, don't worry. No one will see it. But I hope one day you see fit to step out of the pit that you're trapped in and run to Jesus to take his hand and find a life filled with purpose and passion. As for the jokes that you cracked when I took a stand, don't worry about it. Life isn't easy when you leave the boys to become a man. But when I became a man, I did away with the notion of living for the weekend because I looked at society and all I saw was weak men getting up on Monday, dying for Friday. Traveling in leased cars on the highways and byways like material things is all that defines me. Headed to cubicle jobs, trying to climb the ladder, clinging to money like it's all that matters. Boys who never became men, stuck forever in the past tense, trapped in spiritual adolescence. I became a man. I looked at my peers and said, I do not want to be like them. Clinging to the latest trend, dying to fit in, judging each other by the cars at their end. He's the man. He drives the bins. I became a man. I said, I want something more for my life. More than getting wasted under neon lights on Friday nights, only to wake up on Saturday morning with plans to do it again. There are too many boys in this world and not enough men. I became a man. I said that when I leave this world, I want my life to have had purpose. So I stopped wasting my life on things that are worthless. Every minute on the couch in front of the TV was a wasted moment and a journey that should be defining me. A journey of forming a legacy. And I didn't want that legacy to be neglected. So I looked at this world and I didn't accept it. I'm not gonna be who you want me to be. No, I absolutely reject it. I became a man. I picked up my cross and put down my shame. My sins were forgiven in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, my sin will forever remain an afterthought of who I used to be, but no longer am because God saw fit to crucify the Lamb so that I could land in His ocean of grace and find my rest in His holy place because He took my place. He took my nails. He took my hell. He took my cross. He took it all because He had a plan, and for the first time I saw it when I became a man. You've come in the final day. Following oh, God has held you in reserve for nearly six thousand years. to meet your God. Oh, youth of the noble birth. You're part of the Lord's royal army. The army. There are things for each of you to do that no one else can do. You will preserve as well as you are special. 